Ja. Wat een kraan moet ik. Ah, ja, ja. Ik kan niet Ah. Oké. Ja. Ja. Ik weet het niet meer. Ah. Oké. Anyway, voor half een jaar of zo, ik ben werking aan augmented reality project. Main goal is to make app for tourists for Tallinn Old City. So we can walk around and uh, collect points and get like rewards for that. Yeah, same text. <laughs> so uh, uh, at first I tried out Kudan AR. It's like image recognition augmented reality application for Unity or API or whatever it is. And to be honest, uh, it scanned things really well. I mean, all these small pictures, uh, we were like, uh, you had to go on this location, for example, like this one, point at this, uh, direct camera on it, and chest will pop, pop up. Uh, now, uh, all these markers worked extremely well until Feather, uh, until uh, uh, it started getting darker and also you know, snow and what not in the future will uh, hide the markers. So uh, now I'm trying to redesign the whole game and rethink how to do things. So, uh, uh <coughs> one thing I discovered is that uh, using gyroscope is kind of out of the question. Uh, most augmented reality games use gyroscope to place an object in the real world. But the problem is that uh <coughs> a lot of Android phones are missing gyroscope because gyroscope is like expensive addition. So currently I'm trying to fake augmented reality with accelerometer and if anyone wants to try out I have a version of it on my phone. So yeah, I think yeah, that's all. Any questions? How do they usually solve the problem of uh Ah. Well, uh, compared to like Fufore and some other augmented reality apps that had uh, image recognition, uh, Kudan works surprisingly in low light. And some uh, testers managed to do this, managed to scan targets with the uh, help of a friend who would uh, direct light from their phones and, you know, light up the place. So, yeah. But, yeah, <coughs> image recognition based augmented reality for outside places does not really work very well. It would work if uh, all locations were in a room with set lightning and whatnot. So yeah, that was kind of dead end, but an uh, interesting experience. So it's, is it the problem that the uh, original image is taken in light, or is it just that in dark you can't really detect anything? Uh, well, yeah, original images, taken, images are taken like in August. Okay, so it would work if you would take Images at daytime, at nighttime, in August, December, April. Yeah, and switch out the of the time and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But that would increase app size like massively. Yeah. So, yeah, it would be option, but it would require like tons of upkeep, like taking pictures of like 
42 markers every week or so. Yes. But uh, can you have it done in the weekend so that no. you upload the image and then it's done on the server somewhere? Yeah, but uh, from workflow or hmm, how to say? Uh, it's like too much work to do. You need to set some person who's taking pictures like every week and uploading them somewhere. And that's like extra work. Constant upkeep and that's like, you know. So it's really like every week, not just uh, or maybe even op more often and maybe <coughs> makes uh, like uh, some pictures change depending on weather and what not. Uh, I think what well, theoretically it should also be possible to, uh, to, to, get, to just maybe use one image and then simulate different conditions and uh, train the, the system for these different scenarios. Yeah, well, uh, this Kudan API is quite robust and I'm not sure how to do it to be honest. So, yeah. Could you maybe, I don't know, uh, like uh, use GPS as a help for this apps to recognize yeah, yeah, where you are? I'm, yeah, I'm currently using GPS, okay, but, 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 like but, but it's not enough. knows you're there, basically, and uh, the app knows what image uh, sh you should be getting. So, so maybe it could detect more easily. Yes, but uh, yeah, I think like image recognition for outside doesn't work really. For inside rooms, it would work really well for some kind of augmented reality game for museums and whatnot. But uh, I trying to rethink how to do things now. Maybe add some kind of another mini game and make it like more GPS based whole game like similar to Pokemon Go or something like that. So that's what I'm currently working. So yeah. <coughs> So how many of these locations you have? 42 or so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one thing about Kudan, usually every other AR application has like limit of 10 or maximum of 20. But with Kudan, because it is so robust, they can rewrite some logic behind it. Of course, it gets slightly laggy, but compared to others, it works surprisingly well. But yeah, uh, Kudan has one serious issue, it does not have any support at all. Uh, developer said that he fixed one bug like in April, but has not bothered to upload a fixed version. <laughs> so yes, indeed. Hmm, any other questions? Whose project is this? Who's, uh, who started this project? Uh, started Vadim Stutsenko and Nico Nakla. And you find them in the, from Tallinn? In this well, we sent email to Raimond. Okay. We told them, we clicked them, they decided okay. to Google what is augmented reality and start from working from that point on. I think I posted the uh, advertisement in, in the book. Yes, yeah. And, uh, and uh, this uh, position problems uh, tell that uh, it's very hard to make very uh, precise uh, games. So like this, uh, if we talk about this culture history project uh, that, that people should see uh, uh, the image of houses that are uh, now gone, it's very hard because that's uh, about this positioning. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it depends how you do it. Mm. And but there are interesting technology popping up. So soon it would make more sense. And because houses are so big, maybe with some careful placing and some careful logic, it, it is maybe easily doable. Because currently I'm just, I have picture from most, I can mm. scan it in and you know, just pops up. So right one is like marker picture. And this is just object that I can, you know, do okay. different angles. Okay. Because, uh, like, uh, the, if we, we use this in the culture history game, the uh, buildings that uh, now are present, that you can look this uh, building and uh, uh, all the image uh, will come over the internet. Yeah, well, with, uh, with Kairoscope, it is, I think, it is too old. But the uh, like problem is that no, like statistics are kind of shitty. Like every almost like what if there are four phones, maybe one has gyroscope oh on average. For how many years it would be about eighty percent? Did you see some uh, historical statistics? Well, yeah, it's kind of slowly, you know, getting better. But gyroscope, mo that little thing itself is expensive. So in low-end phones, mm -hmm. you might never get gyroscope. Kids don't have gyroscope usually, eh? because they put the uh, phones about 60 euros. So yeah, <laughs> so that's gyroscope itself maybe costs some money. But if you're visiting tourists, then you could use the expensive phone. Yeah, maybe. But of course, I can easily remake this app to something educational. Because, you know, I uh, managed to collect quite interesting information about locations and, you know, history about that. Mm -hmm. So it can be also easily, I can take out the partners system and just make it educational game where play kids can walk around the old city and discover the history and information behind the objects and buildings. So. Okay. But uh, the regular for the spin of company who makes uh, uh, maps and maps usage, usage for uh, marketers. So uh, it uh, it's collects uh, statistics who's near the shops and so the, they send the information of shop uh, best uh, buy information to the to you. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. Uh, it, because it, uh, everything is connected. Okay. Yeah. Google, Google knows where you are. Maybe they are interested in this kind of regular 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 spin offs. Mm. Well. I don't know. It doesn't be feel so. Okay. Because we have already partners. Okay. Like nine partners. So, or, or at least, you know, the location, uh, mm, shops based in Tallinn where you can okay. get to this concept. Uh, it's just I, a, I just need to, Yeah, I just need to get the uh, app itself running. Okay. But uh, uh, a bit similar project was made uh, when the uh, AI was involved, uh, but it was a 3D project it's about the uh, old Italian uh, games. You mean with virtual, virtual reality? Yes. yes. Mm. But uh, this was similar. This idea is that the people will see from the phone the 3D images of the houses. So it was a murder mystery in Italian. And no, okay, that's different thing because on whiteboard they show a hot at survive visual experience where you can walk around in Tallinn old city or teleport around. It, it used some kind of 3D models. Okay. But, uh, but they got the for phones. Hmm. It is a cross media project for the Baltic Film and Media School. Uh, but uh, they didn't get uh, funding for it. 
No. So they, they discarded it. Oh well. Mm -hmm. the, it was, uh, they used uh, uh, this uh, Indre Horglas uh, Optic Milcher uh, mythology. And the story was about this. Uh, so if you are a tourist in Thailand, you want to do something. I think it's called uh, Bob Crawling. <laughs> Wait, so wasn't there some kind of similar thing, or at least that I saw when I was visiting Thailand, like some theater thing? Okay, yeah, but anyway, we are getting way out of topic. Okay. So I think no more questions. And next one. Who wants to be next one? Come on, hands up. <laughs> yeah, I can go. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get the file. Yes, yes, yeah, it's yeah. Can everybody read? Or do I need to zoom in? A bit zoom in maybe. A bit more? Okay. Yes. I don't think I can yes. zoom in anymore. Alright, so... Um, uh, last, last weekend I participated in a, in a thing called Garage 48, the hackathon. Uh, I'm sure you all have heard of it. And, um, and so what we came up with... Uh, uh, at least, like the idea we came up with was was a was a game, for, like game for a phone, and um, 
I, I guess it it's like vaguely related to fitness. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't really have any pictures of the like the initial game that we came up with. Uh, just representing the idea right now to get maybe some people interested in it and help help our team out a bit because th there's not a lot of us currently, and uh, we're not even really being in the game business before so it's all new to us so oh uh, at any rate so let's let's move on uh, so so the current game logic it's uh, uh, I think yeah caught it's I put it in like eight eight steps and uh, I think uh, they will sort of also during the game everything will go in that order as as it's written here. So so I guess I'll do a, something visual on the board also. Can I raise some yes, stuff it's here? It's all right, okay. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's all so basically what happened at the very beginning, this is your phone, right? And that's your phone screen. Uh, and uh, it will be cut into two pieces. So here is your, here is you. That, that's meant, I, I mean, this is all, it's your screen, but you will see why I'm writing this. And um, uh, so, so we, you will appear. Oh, I have colors. Great. So uh, you will appear here in the middle of your screen, and uh, your opponent will appear here. And uh, I mean, it, it's like it's like where they are, and uh, let's say it's like one one kilometer times one kilometer and same goes for you so this is a map where they are right where you are and your opponent is and I guess I can try to make us I don't know road here or something so it looks more like a real thing uh, I'm so bad at this. does that look like a road kind of and there's stuff. Same goes here. I don't know. There's like something, something. Okay. Anyway, so um, so what does it say there? So both players can choose three points now on your op uh, opponent's map. Map in a turn-based fashion. So, uh, so let's say that uh, this is you, and you can go first. So you choose a point on your opponent's map. Let's say you put it here. Now it's your opponent's turn. You can put it somewhere over here. And uh, then you, well, it goes uh, on until both players have placed three points. Right? And I don't know, let's put one over here. So now, uh, I need to scroll down, I think. Okay. A bit. Oh, where's the mouse? Oh, so I'm doing okay. That works. That works in that tab again. Turn drag or up to. Mikä näitä pysyy vielä? Se mikä se ei kuvaa on siinä. Onks tää sitten joku tää? Tiedätkö se näin? Se ei oo. Mikä näitä pysyy vielä? Jaa, mikä ei liiku väga. Otetaan se, että siinä on kyllä vähän. Siinä on vähän siinä. Yeah, 
All right, so now, after you have placed the points, uh, then both players get to make one of these points a fake point that they picked. So this is me, and I'm very clever, right? So I'm going to put one point really close to my opponent, and I'm expecting him to pick that one. And so I make that one a fake point. And uh, that, that point actually, let's say, will appear. And now I, now I get to pick its real location somewhere. Let's put it like really far away because you want to be really mean, right? And uh, I don't know. This is the actual point, just an X. This is an X with a dot in the middle. That's the fake point, right? And uh, the same goes here. I don't know, let's say that the red player makes that one a fake point. And uh, also puts, puts it actually somewhere over here. Okay, so next thing is... Um, okay. Now, now, one thing has changed, actually, in the game logic. Now comes in the part where... Um, uh, both people now pick one of these points here. So um, let's say that's your red player, and you make a make a decision. You're like, all right, I'm, I'm picking that one. So that means that the very first place where the red player has to go is that point, and it's gonna have to go there and basically collect it, whatever it can be gamified, you know. Uh, and uh, let's say that I'm, I'm picking that one, right? And uh, so now, based based on that, our, our game will generate a flag point for both players just to even make make the game more, uh, how to say, uh, bring some fairness into the game because otherwise. Let's say one person could put all of the points really far away and the other one puts them really close to the other player. In that sense, the game would not be fair because this, this guy would go, like, I don't know, could go get the collect point, collect the point really fast and the other guy has to go all the way over there. So now, now, now we, we will develop an algorithm that based on that information now here, that red player has picked this point, has to go to a point, and uh, the red green player has picked that one, has to go to a point. Now we will generate the flag point just to make sure that they're gonna have to travel equal distances. So, uh, I don't know where the game should really make the flag point, but let's say that, I don't know, Somewhere here, it's gonna be, and 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 the other thing, wait, a really important thing that I forgot to tell you about the flag point is that the flag point will also have this thing in it that if you really mean to your opponent, right, you put all of this, let's say that that's me, and I put all of this uh, three points here really far away from my opponent, then the flag point will be generated also really far away from me, so. In that sense, you don't want to be, you know, you want to make some build some kind of tactic because you don't want to put them all really far away because then the flag point will be generated really far away for you also. Uh, so I have placed points, I don't know, kind of far away. So let's say that the flag point will be generated somewhere, somewhere, somewhere over here maybe. I don't know. Looks kind of like a flag, right? And uh, for this player, he has to go somewhere here. And so the flag point, and he was also kind of mean to me, so the flag point will be somewhere here. So now, so now. So now th this is one of the ideas to make this game more fun. It's that on one of these, one of these, let, let's say that uh, you know how on Google Maps there is a thing that like there's multiple ways to go to a place. One, some places take like say like two minutes longer or something. 
So maybe on that map, on, on the little bit of a longer path, we create like a GPS chamber point. So you can go on the longer path and take this, pick up this GPS chamber point, and therefore you can take down your opponent's GPS for like a minute or something, just to make the game more fun, right? And uh, and uh, that that's one of the ideas how to make it more gamey so far. And okay, so c can you maybe scroll down? Okay. Okay, thank you. So yeah, so the first now now the first must go point for the uh, for the red player is is, is the one that the other player has picked for him and he picked one of these three, right? So it would be this point here. And uh, and th the next one would be would have to be the flag flag point. Right? And I mean this this will depend on like actually in the maps what, what these paths are gonna be because you can't really walk through everything usually. So that that's one of the challenges that we're facing that where you actually can even go, because you, you can't always do this, right? If it's not like a field, if it's actually a city or something. And uh, the same same thing, I don't know, let's say something like that. Just keep it simple right now. All right, so... Uh, yeah, and then, then the third place where you go is where you started from. So it's basically like you collect the flag and you go back home because yeah, it actually would make no sense if like this is where the game ended because let's say you started playing from your home and now you're just the game ended and you're like one kilometer away from your home like that would be kind of I don't know not so good I would say so yeah so then you go back here and uh, basically the, the player who is faster is the winner so this is the idea is that you could do this basically with like anybody in the world, like a guy in New York or something. Like let's say I had like some friends in the United States, I could play this with them to go for a little job, make it more fun. That, that that's the idea of this game really. I know like if, if anybody I is interested, I, I can go through this process more thoroughly, so it would probably make a lot more sense. And I, I feel like this could actually be a fun game. And uh, but yeah, I definitely have no background of making games or anything. So uh, and our team also doesn't actually. So we do need some help making or at least getting this thing started. Get some good ideas. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that that is it. Any? Do you guys have any questions? Uh, question. So how do you learn like different from cheating? Uh, like biking or something? Uh, like just emulating GPS to the or something. Oh, okay. Like like kind of like hacking or something. Oh, I don't. Th that has not been thought of so far. I think that's kind of a. That's, that's a secondary problem. Once we have the game, then we have to make sure that it's unbreakable, sort of, right? Or like because, uh, for example, if you want to do this in a web browser, mm -hmm. then it's like, really easy mm -hmm. to just say, I am now in London, and now oh, okay. I'm in China, and right. like a snap. So, mm -hmm. for, for example, like this. But then you would have to write, find out this, you would need to find out this coordinate, right? Exactly. but. Can you really calculate that from a picture? I mean, you would. Ha the hacker would also really have to want to win for that reason. This game is more for just doing it with your friend, right? Because like, yeah, I can do it with my friend, and if he, if I can obviously see that he's hacking, or it, it kind of kills the idea of even doing it, you know? Yeah. Well, except when when you have a high score system. And it's yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, the, the idea is to have like a part where you can just play this game with your friend, right? And and also like like kind of like a chat roulette type of thing where it just matches you with somebody, and uh, then you have like score kept and all that thing, all those things. 
what's all the Niantic games and you know, Pokemon Go and everything mm. is uh, kind of selling its data mm. and uh, stuff. So for how long people will take from this point to this point mm. and everything with this, all of those games are. This is where this two minute uh, track uh, estimation comes from. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there could be a thing that, like, if some point is really unreachable or something, then the players assist and, like, hey, I can't access it or something, and uh, he will be generated a new point somewhere where it's accessible. <coughs> and if in that location we, I don't know, get a lot of data that a lot of players can't ac access that point, then we can confidently say that, all right, you Did can't you place a point there. This is again a question of social interaction. So if you press this big red button and say, yeah. like, I can access this button, yeah. like, uh, is it uh, like, how do you know that the exactly. person really can access it? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Because may maybe he accessed it the wrong side or something. You could get in the other side. just says, yeah. that, no, that's too far away. I can't access this. Yeah, oh. yeah. Well, the points could be bigger. Like, yeah, of course. Mean yeah, yeah. Th they're, they're probably going to be like, that if you're in the vicinity of the point, then you have the opportunity to collect it or something, you know? Yeah. And you'll have bigger points and then it bigger maps too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You yeah. still have the same program because in bigger maps and like maybe bigger closed areas. areas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Director installations and so on. Yeah. Yeah, and th these are the things that are, are needed to solve at the moment. Yeah. So basically, it just needs to be a more badass uh, parkour guy. You <laughs> 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 can still run it. Yeah, yeah maybe not play this uh, near a military. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I don't know. The idea for me is to get some people with good, like, I don't know, what is this thing you can call it, like, game makers? You got, are you all game developers. makers? Yeah. What? Game developers. The game developers, yeah. Get at least, like, one really good guy interested in this project. So we get, in, uh, I don't know, I don't know, suck him out of information or help, because <laughs> it, it's definitely needed. So yeah. who do you have already in your team? Yeah, uh, who, who do we have? We have like, I think, currently like five people. We have like two people uh, who do designing work for the uh, for that, and uh, then we have one one guy who does the back end stuff, and uh, but but he also works at, at transfer wise, so it's really complicated. Like, I, I feel like he can't really give a lot of put a lot of time into this game. Um, so definitely one part area is like making the back end really really solid and and oh and who else do we have we have uh, we have one guy who was uh, making the front end so like uh, this part where you actually you know you you get it. and uh, and then me also and uh, I was uh, making the the game logic and also like uh, I try what I try to do is make this the fairness of the game like the map work out and uh, and uh, I also help with the front end the coding and, and stuff like that. So you're more like in the game designer? Or do you have a you already have mm -hmm. for that? What? This designer in what sense? So, so who designs the gameplay mechanics, the user experience or that? Or we want someone who develops. We we probably yeah. want like a you know like a systems engineer, okay. a guy who like knows everything about every department and brings the all the people together and can give help to every every area because we all, all kind of lack have lack of knowledge. D just just to accelerate the process because otherwise we would have to learn it all by ourselves and probably get a lot of things wrong. And uh, I don't know. One crazy idea I have was if uh, 
it is all in multiple scheme, there are fixed points and uh, mm -hmm. so you could like have a number of fixed points but the user still configure the all yeah, that, that, that was also yeah, that the way we are thinking of solving this issue, at least for the very first time, is that just have already pre-accessible pre points on the map, and then the user gets to pick three of them for the opponent, and, and so... Or oh, even the user could, like, uh, for example, I would go around the dark to uh, mm -hmm. uh, save 20 points, then go home, and make a path of three to send to my friend to visit those points. Or maybe the player uh, by themselves can select the points which the opponent later can uh, like pick. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, like if you are playing the game and you can't access these points. So, so, so you give feedback. When, when you first install the game or something, or when you join it, Mm -hmm. uh, at some specific location, then you can mark some points where you would like to run, mm -hmm. and then uh, <laughs> you can only play yourself if you can't access it. Oh. <laughs> it makes it much harder, I think, to bring players to a game in that case, because I like mm -hmm. that your idea that, for example, I fly to Barcelona, mm -hmm. take my phone, and I can immediately yeah, yeah, that is true. without before mapping accessible point because if I have already mapped these accessible points I haven't taken my exercise what's the point now <laughs> <laughs> going True. in True. three of them. Just that idea that you can play with anyone anywhere. Yeah, yeah. It in Antarctic or South America. It's it's I think one of the coolest aspects yeah, exactly. And uh, I, I also like this idea that, especially when you get to do it with your friend who lives far away, right? And you're really good friends with him. Like, I, I really feel like there should be, like, the friends part also. Like, the one, one where you are, like, just matched with a random dude or, or a lady. <laughs> and, uh, and, and the other is where you can just, you know, I don't know, just, you know who you're going to play with, you know, like, that part. Because like I feel like I personally would be using that part a lot more, where I just do it with, with a good friend of mine, you know. And I, I feel like this uh, this would get people go out more because you actually get to like challenge your opponent. The, the part is that you pick the path for your friend, right? That that's the fun part, and he picks it for you. So I, I feel like that 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 is why this is cool. Yeah, I've thought a lot of, about this game, and uh, people have told me to like I don't know just sleep on it, and you probably will like not want to have anything to do with it next week. But well, you did yeah. you sleep on it for a week. And yeah, and I, I yeah I, I I don't know like I, I feel like we we just have we're missing some we need a few people in the team who actually know what they're doing, and that that would that would be really good. But you know. Find people is to, in my opinion, or starting out is cool because when you get more people, mm -hmm. it, it's just plus the talks. No, I agree, I agree. But we are five people who don't know anything really. That that's the problem. Like my background is physics. Like yeah, uh, yeah. Most, most of us don't know anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. we start with <laughs> I mean, you are already have this game going on, right? Yeah, so you uh, have experience. Yes, but. When I started it, I first googled it, but this oh. augmented reality. Oh. <laughs> so okay. So yeah. it's learning process. No one knows anything yet. Everything changed so fast. Okay. I mean, in maybe a couple of months, you might get some, something happy or something that mm -hmm. they don't have it. They make your team mm -hmm. do it easier. But you don't know it. You just have to start from start bigger, bigger, bigger. No, no. That that's how we have started. That's how our workflow currently is. That we all learn basically, and then update the the game and then learn more, and you know, do more to it. I, I, all, all I just was thinking is is that if we also had some experienced people who we can consult with, 
but who are also kind of in the process, so they are like updated, that they know what's going on in, in, in making this game. So like, for example, let's say I can go to that person and ask like, hey, I don't know, I have an issue here, can you look at it, Wh whatever. Like, Yes, of course. I think we have like people mm -hmm. who could like could do a little bit of mentoring in yeah. different fields. It uh, depends more of uh, if you have like uh, like um, questions you want to be solved. Yeah. So you should uh, just see like um, yeah, what's what are the questions you want? Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. So, but also, also, it would be nice if the person was still like in some sense like part of the team too so he, he, he or she wouldn't feel like an outsider mentor person that, oh, that maybe you might think so <laughs> outside of you, maybe I don't know it, it, was, it just I don't know what, what engine are you going to use uh, Wait, what what game engine are you going to use the ga game engine like you need to like a program where you build your game. Okay, I, I, I actually am not sure what these are use. Well, I know the language they use is, is Java, where they're writing it, so the game. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm very not familiar with games, so. They're writing it from scratch, huh? Yeah. No, no, Java, but it's not and Mm. Mm. I mean, I thought that they read it from scratch. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, is there a, any more questions? Should I leave my contact somewhere? So of course. Or uh, something? Well, we have the Facebook group. Okay. So the right of the thing, they are so on Facebook. Okay. okay. So yeah, okay, alright. And write, uh, what, what kind of skills you need mm -hmm. to join our team. Yeah, okay. okay. Maybe if you already have some questions about mm -hmm. things, like maybe, I don't know, how you so want to manage your team or uh, something about. So, for example, this game engine could be a good question. First, it was around within your team, and then around what kind of engines would people suggest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right then. I think this is it for today. I will erase it. Okay, so we have a yellow guy that goes in and that's your list. That works. I'm going to get in this in this hawk number. Everything works, but I haven't tested it yet. <laughs> okay. You need to show them, but then it's your idea. You test the taste and then I can't even see. This drops on air. Yeah. yeah. Oh. You drop duplicate the hands. So, are you ready to get wrecked? <laughs> <laughs> So some of you are familiar with this game. Uh, we got second place, I think, from a game chat, Ludum 38 or 7 or 6. It was a long time ago already. So we kick it, kick it around a bit like, oh, we should totally work on it. Yeah, we should. A few months later, we should totally work on it. Yeah, we should. And now we actually started working on it about a year later. So right now we're pretty much um, building it from ground up again, so the system would be more reliable to adding new content. So we don't really have a game right now, but we have the new main guy. And animations and, and this is the wrong window. 
I'm not sure if this. Oh, it works. So also, <laughs> also, I am. Uh, I learned animation from scratch. Didn't know anything about animation before. Now I know a little bit about animation, and uh, I did all the. Right now, the character only has like six animations. It's the jumps and falls and runnings and and when you're flying through the air. <laughs> and this is our my first animation that I made. That's the buggy one. I don't know what went wrong. The others are working great. I think there's some collision errors or something. But um, the animations, they're all done in meshes. Which means I have one image for each animation and I'll just move them around. Therefore, the whole build is like, uh, was like 60 megabytes or something, uh, so it's uh, super compact. And uh, I don't know if I have the tools that I can show that I did it, how I did it. And um, yeah, right now we have uh, pretty much the new aiming system where it follows mm. the cursor. Mm. And uh, we have uh, wonderful recoil effects, <laughs> <laughs> which is a bit over the top. And we actually have uh, four sets of armor that I managed to break on Sunday. Because I made a new character. We have the, it is right now, it's the fish armor body and the mm. Christmas hat. <laughs> but I have the metal armor and other armor and the whole system to add them is now super easy I just have to draw one image and I will attach it to the bones that animate the character and the whole uh, armor animates with it so essentially I can make uh, one armor set in uh, an hour yes and implementing it is also very easy I just drag it in uh, convert to the sprite mesh and just drag the mesh to the right place so we've been mostly working on the system to make everything uh, like uh, sufficient enough that we can start building it. So right now, while well we have the character, oh, there's one, one hat up there as well. Thank God, thank God for recoil effects, I can fly around. And uh, he throws little yarn barrels, balls. It's also super easy to animate. I will see if I can show you. I'm not sure. It's my animation scene. Oh, it is working. So this is the animation I imported today. Haven't really gotten to animate it yet, but I can show you how it works. There is no animator. Okay. I can maybe I just have the component animator. it is to do um, but yeah we have also we have tons of new weapons and explosions um, right now our next issue oh, we also made the game design document 
where we like set down all the themes of the game, levels, what what we want to add, what's the controls going to be, what uh, all uh, all the essential parts. And um, so yeah, right now since uh, uh, we uh, I think we now got the second programmer finally, so we can have someone deal with the monsters with the other program and deals with the uh, character implementations of weapons and armor pickups and that everything mo works smoothly and... Who's the second programmer? Um, a friend of mine from Tallinn. I was like, um, I tried to get Josep to the team. He was sort of interested but then he decided that uh, he does not really have time for another project right now. So I had to search elsewhere. And uh, yeah, okay, I don't know. Yeah, we can watch these animations again. Um, I don't know. Any questions? So yeah. So what are the limitations with this kind of animation style? Um the uh, limitations right now what I've noticed that I want the new character that I imported today it has lots of tentacles I wanted to make a like t tentacle area monster but uh, it doesn't animate uh, like tentacles very well it starts snapping them and and I don't think I can really do the smooth curving with uh, this unity plugin which is free also and everybody can download it and use it it's fairly easy to use once you watch like four tutorials and mess around a little. And the best part about it is that everything is already in Unity. I had s uh, I tried the uh, Moho 12, uh, uh, Dragon Bones, uh, Spriter Bro, uh, and I just uh, importing the, them into the Unity and getting the work in Unity was such a nightmare. So like this, this, uh, this final, uh, this was like my, me giving up and going to that plugin that I was I wasn't very interested in it at the beginning, uh, but uh, you can really do cool things with it. Like uh, this character has three different atta attack animations, uh, and it's like uh, the animating is super fast. I can make uh, one character animation in like couple of hours. It it, uh, it takes half the time to animate than it takes to draw the thing. Uh, like, yeah, so adi adding new content will be really, really, really easy now. Which is this game is all about. You get to fight ridiculous things with ridiculous weapon being a ridiculous rectangle. So, um, I'm actually might get to show you how it's animated a bit and I made some gifs of workflow uh, is it this the gif thing? yes log in and show you So this is uh, the bug that I had to mo t uh, today. Uh, this is I know what it's got. It's because it didn't had uh, uh, a keyframe at for the bone that moves the head at the beginning. So I moved it slightly, but it decided to move it slightly the other direction. So it had to go the full circle. <laughs> it's easy to fix. But yeah, as you can see here, the the tentacles are clipping weirdly and there's like five bones in here so when they like uh, go to a certain angle they just <laughs> broke so I don't think I can really do this well maybe that's interesting select um. I want to use this, this uh, anima 2 event mm. Yeah, this uh, is uh, Anima Duty. Okay, so what if you add more vertices? 
would that help with the strategy uh, I could. I did add like a lot. Well, I don't, I don't remember if I added. I, I, I did add them in the middle, but I can try to like uh, go overboard with it. Um, so this is the guy you already know. This is uh, now him rigged up, and pretty much all you all you do is pick up some bones and just move him around, and you record it, and it's super 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 easy. As you can see, this is uh, not right now. Like right after I finish rigging it, I always play with it a bit because it's so much fun. <laughs> Th throw him around and. Oh, the, the snapping is for the bones. Yeah. 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 Ye
I, I've been uh, like uh, one of my favorite games is Rayman, all the Rayman franchise, and I really love their uh, art style and graphics. Uh, so I really went into and wanted to find out how they made made it. Uh, this is where I like first got like introduced to the mesh animations and. Yeah, but what's happening here is that you have a 2D sprite that gets uh, stretched differently like depending on your animation yeah so that's that's fine but I, I i think it's fine it ad adds more it might like bother you here a bit uh, because this is uh, so big is the center of focus uh, but when they're like wobbling around like everything pretty much wobbles in my game uh. mm -hmm. like uh, the main character is pretty pretty much chillified now <laughs> <laughs> every action makes him wobble and uh, wait until you see when uh, when he gets hit by bullets or stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think like it uh, brings everything alive. If it's like static image, just doing its static movements, uh, I I don't really like that. Uh, I want it to like be more stretchy and alive. And okay. also, yeah. there's a way to. Uh mixed traditional animation and bone animation and I think it looks really good if you mix uh, both of them like you uh, draw some of the only some of the keyframes uh, one thing that uh, we want to do okay two things that are on the to-do to -do list uh, but they're in the future is that we're just gonna we're gonna make normal maps of everything and we're gonna add lighting in the game that illuminates these two D sprites, uh, and the second thing is uh, I wanna try out adding uh, traditional like uh, frame by frame animation effects uh, to the mesh animations. Like let's say you have a sword, and I add like uh, fire, fire to the like animations uh, that I I don't really wanna use. I will I will we will use particles a bit, uh, but uh, I want the look of the game to be really weird and artsy and. So the effects as well have to be like over the top, like the characters. If there's gonna be like a realistic uh, explosion that we got from the asset store, it just won't gonna fit in. It has to be like paintbrush explosion and. Hmm. Yes. Uh, we're very close to the end, so I have a question. Yes. Uh, sprite sprites uh, take less performance, but they take way more space. Like, uh, like if you wanna have a compact game, like low, like space requirements, then mesh is better. But mesh does take more resources, but you have the opportunity to bake the animation. Uh, so you bake every frame. Uh, it like uh, pre uh, right now when the frames are going, uh, it has to calculate how this bone moves and this bone moves and this bone moves when you move something. Uh, but when you bake it, uh, it will uh, have it in the memory that uh, how the bones are supposed to move every bone individually. It doesn't have to like reference other bones. It, every bone knows exactly where they go. So this like reduces the performance cost. So and uh, I think the computers are pretty good these days that this isn't really an issue for a game like that. Uh. Oh, well, we aren't really focusing on mobile with this one because uh, I don't know. Getting into mobile market seems like hell. It's like five hundred games every day, and you have to like compete with that. And oh, wait, they do almost the same on Steam right now. Uh, it's easier on S Steam and PC. Like it's easier on PC. Because uh, promote, promoting yourself is uh, easier because you do it at the same platform that uh, you can play the game. Uh, but promo promoting a mobile... When is the last time you saw an ad for a mobile game and you went to check it out? Or a video about mobile game and you went to check it out? Uh, but, but when you see a video about a game about, oh, a PC game coming, early access, you just like, uh, at least watch five seconds of it. Uh, when you scroll down, uh, like somewhere. Uh, so you, if you, uh, the first five seconds is compelling enough, you might watch uh, thir further and like, and uh, you, you get interested in the game or not. Uh. Also, we plan to do it in open development. So we're gonna like uh, once we get the systems up and running uh, to like start actually making the game. Uh, then we we wanna like release a build every month or so that people can play. Like yeah, like pretty much they can play as we develop it, 
they can uh, give us feedback, they can like uh, get connected to the game already and uh, communicate with the developers as well. Uh, this way we, uh, we solve several issues. We solve the promotional issue to get fans. We solve the feedback issue to get the balance. And uh, we solve bug fixing. Because uh, I like saw a really good uh, GDC talk about open development uh, and they really convinced me that uh, like uh, people like become super fans if they like can communicate with developers and maybe even some of their ideas get implemented in the game uh, then they're even more going to recommend that game to their friends uh, so they can post like oh I made I, I had that idea and they like put it in the game uh. Um, this is um, right now because, uh, like, uh, and in terms of multiplayer, it will have uh, couch co op 100%. But if it will have a multiplayer, we're like through uh, online means, uh, we are not sure of that yet uh, because we're in such an early development phase. But uh, I think. The open development works for this game for uh, the reasons that we can add content really fast now, and uh, you can like try out different like methods of beating the game uh, because each level is gonna be like a huge box. You have to survive there, find the boss. Boss will be like uh, spawn lots of little bosses, minions. And you have to like survive there and then you get your uh, rectang rectangular points uh, it's, it's gonna be a little uh, like uh, little like diagrams and they're gonna connect and see how perfect box you get how, how good your rectangle was depending on your score and uh, I, I or at least I hope it's just gonna be like mindless fun game uh, with like uh, wacky wacky graphics and uh, it's version for the for later because uh, no, uh, when I de developed it uh, no why I asked mobile version I was thinking like how who, how well would uh mesh animation work from retaining a mobile game. But this is a resource comparison. Well one one thing that's good about it is that it makes the game smaller. Mm -hmm. Like that's really important in mobile games. So we only have one frame, and uh, yeah. all of this uh, doesn't take uh, up too much. Like uh, this, this character alone is like, I don't know, maybe one megabyte or one character. I think. Yeah, but, but, but actually, with this plugin, you are supposed to paint the animations. Yeah. yeah. You shouldn't use IK in, in the actual. Yeah, the because form. it. Uh, I just been a bit lazy, <laughs> but I, I, I. When you paint animations, then the size might increase. Hmm. Okay. Because they take some space. I don't. Well, if you are not going to be interested in uh, animations in mobile uh, games, then one goes to the analysis. This tower that has came to two thousand characters. Two thousand characters. So, any more questions? When we can play it. Yeah, I really. Uh, can we like it on the Steam over there? <laughs> Un unfortunately, not. Uh, we do have uh, like the goal of at least getting the first build out there this year, and with it we like um, once we get the first first level in yarn world, it's gonna be yarn yarn themed with all the cats and yarn balls as you <laughs> as you have noticed and the grand <laughs> yeah, and um, once you like get that going, we're just I I'm gonna go on full on uh, promotion as well. Then I'm gonna. And since I can, I have so much content to like 
tease one by one so I like pretty much have months full of content just to like schedule for teasing for our content updates like and I, don't, I don't know if uh, I'm that motivated but I could even automa automate it <laughs> one evening make all the posts and it's gonna have the taste that he's gonna post it so uh, yeah I'm pretty much because uh, I don't re really have a job right now I'm working on it full time so uh, I have lots of what uh, uh, happened to you? What uh, happened to the melancholy? Is it frozen it, or it's uh, moving very slow. It, it has some backend issues, like uh, the logic and things. And who's dealing with this? Uh, Egon. Egon. Yeah, I have uh, full confidence that he will figure it out, but I just think that everybody is really busy right now with their uh, own work and. Because uh, Jonathan has this the package machine thing project very very high speed right now and okay. so yeah no updates from Melanchory at the moment. Okay. Uh, if you c get uh, the theme on Alpha, we can we, we can like it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you got the uh, team. Uh, Every skill you need? Uh, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying because the new program that we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna get, uh, he has never done game developing before, but he, like, he knows code and things, something that I don't know. So I'm just gonna, you know, give him the things and like figure it out. But you didn't know animation before? So yeah, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Also, with this plugin, I was finally forced to learn Unity. Before I was like, you're the programmer, you deal with it. I mean, I, I, I'll just, I've learned how to use GitHub, this is enough for me. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> yeah, but now it's like uh, feeling more better about Unity. Feeling more game developer-ish. <laughs> Um, I don't know, I can maybe show the uh, the game design document. Uh, oh, yeah, I can go from here. I lost the cursor. No. Okay. I heard people do that, <laughs> so I did it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna quickly scroll through it. So I just uh, analyze the game, what what it's gonna be about. Just get the uh, all the key points down, so we have a reference point all the time. This is the first draft only, so we're probably gonna change it as well. is about evil rectangulars. So yeah, everything's like, uh, and we need to like uh, 
maybe one day get investors or something we can give them the document and they can look at it and be like well if this is so professional we're gonna give you lots of money now <laughs> perhaps yeah so pretty much all the essentials that we need so all the programmers when they're like feeling like oh what should i do it again like reference here at what should be done we do have the we, we use github uh, task lists it's uh, i think is more convenient because we have to go to github all the time anyway so we can just tag who has to do something and have milestones and stuff so yeah any questions do you try the hack and plan uh no okay, what's what's this that about this design document it's a tool for Design documents. Oh. Most of them maybe terrorism. No, it's not about design documents. It's very well or for me, it's all. I don't use that. But there's a possibility to design, uh, game design, and uh, to develop on this game design talk for uh, the two, uh, two uh, tools. Uh, which included this game design document was actually done and the other was only uh, game design to, to remember the game, but we, we got the link on Facebook. But yeah, the and plan uh, uh, helped this development phase also, mm -hmm. the design. Yeah, but and I think the project manager did the microdevelopment and the theory one using it. I think we have such a chaotic development. Mm. Because everybody else like uh, has uh, jobs and schools and and uh, well, my my school starts on February, so then I will be busy as well. So we don't really we have rough milestones. We uh, I tried like having high paced development, but everybody uh, like after the second week, it was like ah no. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we're like taking it at our own pace. We're not really in a hurry, but we're constantly dealing with it. Do you have uh, some kind of milestones or plan to finish the game? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, something, something. well, we have the plan of finishing the first level by the end of the year. And when the first level is finished, then uh, all there is left to do is polish. Okay. Uh, polish and add content because uh, when we have the first level like playable then uh, everything is done essentially then then it's all about uh, adding new content new tweaks uh, like uh, I don't know power up that changes your eye model into glasses so the camera zooms out a bit or something uh, some silly things uh. And just uh, adding content and polish at that point, uh, because then we will have all the core concept of the game. If we have some new ideas, then it will be like uh, after that phase we're gonna implement them. And we're gonna have them uh, in the UI. Every level has a boss. There is the boss is gonna have a little window where he's like chilling there, commenting on your gameplay, occasionally throwing stuff at you. And like uh, when you do things and later the we want to do it like this that the boss actually like breaks the UI and comes th comes out of the his window and then you have to fight it and and it's something we had these ideas that sometimes you like there's something li really tiny in the boss window but it's actually really far away so it comes closer and it's like huge and do you have uh, uh with the team uh, from that uh, what the monetization of uh, model is to uh, uh, sell it to the publisher, mm -hmm. to sell it by yourself on this team and market it, or to try to find investors like uh, from fund wise. So mm -hmm. um, we we haven't thought that far yet. <laughs> okay. yeah, we do like well, ideally it's like gonna be like. Uh, like your uh, everyday game, old school tactics. You buy the game, you have the game. You we you get an uh, buy an expansion back, you get an expansion back. It's like the, we'll keep it simple. We're not gonna use. Okay. 
but about the, we'll uh, see if like everything is gonna be like more refined by the end of the year when we get the first level done then we can actually see what the game is so yeah we're gonna like well, all the monsters gonna have to have their uh, behaviors and uh, all the loot system has to work because I just broke it uh, and uh, yeah because uh, if you need a uh, uh, market, so massively, you need the money, and that mm -hmm. place, uh, then you need investors on fund fund wise or on other places. I I I've been kicking around that idea of mm -hmm. doing uh, Indiegogo. Indiegogo is also, but uh, uh, it told me about humble bundle that the humble bundle started to publish uh, by themselves, the games. Yeah, as, as the as well. no truth with the fury is with humble bundle. No, no truth with the fury is constant. Uh, humble bundle was published. I guess maybe ask them how they manage it, uh, what they did to get the humble bundle as the publisher and what the, the, the is uh, the percentage is and so on. Mm -hmm. You can ask see. I don't know. What I can ask uh, any of them actually. I've been there. I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, any other questions? No. no. Okay. Thank you.